So in today's video, we're going to talk about Reese's four DWIs. Ooh, when you, when you say it out loud like that. I do want to start this video off by saying that it is not okay to drink and drive. No. Always get a driver, always take an Uber, do whatever you have to do. It is not safe. The things that he is going to talk about in this video, we do not promote whatsoever. So. No. Jessica is a staunch proponent of not driving drunk and I can say that you know, through experience, so am I. Um, your mentality, I think, changes as you get a little older as to you, you're maybe your humanity and you're the reality of that, you know, you could die or hurt somebody else hits a little harder. Mm -hmm. When you're young, you just, just doesn't soak in as much. And that's when most of this happens. If this is the first video you're seeing of us, hi, my name is Jess. This is my fiance, Reese. My entire Me. channel. I'm Reese. Me. <laughs> my entire channel is about prison, mental health, addiction, and all of that. If you want to follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's... Two dollars. <laughs> it's only ever gonna be two dollars. So cute. So. All of those linked in the description box down below. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. Smash it. Smash that button. That's, I mean, smash it like you've never smashed a button before in your life. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's kick this thing off. Oh. How in the actual do you have four DWIs? Well, it was with a lot of effort, um, poor decision making, um, immaturity, social angst, and trying to be cool that we've gotten to these talks, right? So, um, some of you may be asking. Sorry, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. We're having, a, we're struggling here. We're struggling with the dog. Some of you may be asking with four DWIs, why am I still allowed to drive? <laughs> Jessica still also questions this because in her mind, she doesn't think I'm a good driver when actually I think I'm a fantastic driver and she's just off her meds when she's sitting in her anxiety seat. Um, you are, you're, will... you're like my grandma. If, if somebody's in front of me like 500 meters away is breaking, you clutch the bar, like they're not even close to us. What's a meter? I'm just kidding. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Speak America. Speak American. Um, anyway, so we'll, we'll figure out how I got here and, and, and some things we longed away. I think usually for those of you that don't know, you know, and those of you that do watch, I'm only brought on this channel for theatrics, funny stories, and what not to do while I shamefully taste, dis share the distasteful choices of my life and pray that nobody I work with or work with intimately ever sees these videos. Time out. We have, I have received hate for Reese not being on the channel enough. Yeah. And people have said that I use him as an accessory. He didn't choose to be a YouTuber. <laughs> He's great arm candy. Yeah. Um, he didn't choose to be a YouTuber, so I am very grateful every time you come on the channel. Thank you. I do have a few good stories and some, some things that we can learn. Um, so let's just get into it here. So how do you get 4 DWIs and you're able to drive? Well, it wasn't strategic. I didn't ideificate on this. I just somewhat accidentally spaced them out over a duration of time. Um, and like any other good student of the game, I started getting in trouble early. Start them early. That's my, that's my, that's my mantra. I got my first DWI when I was 16, okay? Um, so, and it was just like you usually get any DWIs. It's founded by foolish, foolish theatrics, bad decision making anyway. So we're out having a good time, me and my friend, Josh. I'll leave his, his last name out, but if you see this, you know who you are. You were with me on my, my first go. And I, I, I had a, I was fortunate enough, my parents also gave me a very nice car to drive when I was 16. It was a 1971 Chevy Chevelle, cool car, Viper Red, had the Corvette Rally rims. I did not deserve this car. But anyway, no. if you're gonna make bad decisions, the last thing you need is a car that draws a lot of attention to you. So anyway, we're out having a good time and you know, somewhere in my mind, I think we should go to the bowling alley because bowling alley is where you're gonna get, a, you know, we're running low on drinks and uh, it's where all the girls are at, right? So we should go to the bowling alley. And um, everybody else is like, the bowling alley is closed, man. It's like two in the morning. I'm like, no, it's Friday, they keep it open. This is in like Arkansas back in the late 1990s. So like there's no bowling alley open. It's the 90s. Yeah, so anyway, so we get into my car and the whole way over there, we're talking about how we're gonna have this great time bowling, right? 
and we get there and like everybody else says, the bowling alley is closed. So on the way back home, to admit our defeat and failure, um, we get pulled over and slide over and I think like, oh man, get my seatbelt on, this is gonna be okay. It was not okay, like at all. So I, uh, you know, it's Northwest Arkansas. They have like a bunch of cops and nothing to do. I was probably the only car on the road at this time and in a, a very loud car. Been so there. yeah, so it was like 2.30, two in the morning back from the bowling alley. Of course, I'm left of center. You know, that's the old swerving. That's the way they write the ticket. Pulls me over, I think I'm gonna be okay. Not at all. I go to step out of the car, stumble getting out of the car. <laughs> it was just an epically bad, a bad scenario. So I walk a line, yeah, right. Wouldn't take a crime yeah. stopper to figure out your drug. <laughs> yeah, right. He did not have to be a pro. So anyway, 16, I'm off to jail, first DWI. My parents don't want to come get me. Of course, I'm an epic failure and it's an embarrassment and da 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 da. So anyway, so I admit that I've just made some bad decisions. I take my charges, you know, my license gets suspended. I got to pay the fine and everything else and all is going to be good in the world, right? I'm going to own my mistakes. I'm going to be a grown up and get better. That doesn't happen. So we're on, on to number two here. We're just gonna go right into the next one since it happened pretty sequentially. Um, <laughs> I, I, I get past all that and admit my failures and I'm gonna get better and my suspension for my driver's license is up and I still have the car in the driveway that I haven't been allowed to drive. Actually, I think they give you, um, this is back before they made you do the, the blow test. So you could get a permit that would allow you to drive to work and to school. So I was still driving on a case by case needed basis, right? So anyway, I remember my license gets unsuspended and at this point in my time my parents you know and I've talked about on the channel how my addiction and my partying started in my younger years and this is very much the timeline woven in here um, were a little bit curious about some of the things I were getting into but you know I was promising that I was being cautious and it was just social teenage angst and everybody else was doing it too right um, I don't know why I air quoted that, but anyway. So my license gets unsuspended. Now I remember my friend Chance has come over and we're gonna go out for the first time. I'm gonna leave Chance's last name out too. If you're watching this, you know who you are. You're with me on number two. Anyway, so and he makes the false promise to my mother that don't worry, I won't let anything happen to him. We're gonna be fine. So we leave to go to this party in the car, the same loud car, and we go. And this is, this is the saddest DWI, I think, because I was the most exposed and I still got busted. Um, so we go to this party a ways out from where my folks live and the, the, the kegs are running low, all right? And I'm like, I have a car. I can get us to the Missouri state line because at the time, they still didn't sell alcohol in Arkansas in the county that we lived in. Oh my God, you grew up in a dry county? Yeah. That concept is so foreign to a New Yorker. I know. I, don't, I don't understand. I know. So anyway, the beer's running low and I'm still on my paper license. I don't even have a new card license yet. I, st I still have the paper that says this young child who's made a mistake is now properly authorized to, to drive. His new license is in the mail. Any day now it will arrive. And here I am already making an epically bad decision, right? So I'm like, I can get us to the Missouri, Missouri state line, no problem. And this guy, I forget, his name was Ben. I won't say your last name, Ben, if you're watching this as well. I'm gonna try to give, be some, um, exercise some discretion here. Um, has a fake ID. He's gonna go with me. And I am so drunk, the whole time I'm calling Ben by somebody else's name, he has to keep correcting me. Is it McLovin? <laughs> it's not McLovin. <laughs> anyway, so I drive in my car with this guy. I'm so drunk, I can't even remember his name every two minutes. One eye open, probably. Mm -hmm. I drive 30 plus minutes to get to the state line. We load up on beer, and I drive almost all the way back, okay? To the point where we could almost walk if my car broke down but it didn't break down, I got pulled over. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, not now, please not now. And this guy, Ben, he's freaking out. Cause he's like, hey, don't tell him I got a fake ID. I'm like, you, I'm about to go to jail. I was like, this sucks. Fuck you and your ID. You have know? Yeah, who cares about that? So he pulls us over and I'm thinking, oh, not again, please. Just anything let me get out of this because this is just horrible timing. Yeah, that never happened. Um, 
I went to jail. And of course, you know, as we're leaving my house, my buddy said, don't worry, nothing bad's gonna happen. I won't let him get into trouble. And I'm like, I learned my lesson, he's right. I'll never do that again. Still on that paper license, number two, boom. Not even a year's passed and I hit my, my second DWI. So anyway, I get my suspension, which is now on a second one, is like almost two years. It's a long time on your second DWI. The fines are a little bit harsher and you know, the, the I think some community service and stuff like that, but what really gets you is that the, the suspension of your license. It's just, it's exponentially longer. The first one, it's like three or four months. It's not that bad. The second one is, it's a long time you don't get a license. So anyway, um, so this happens, I, you know, I. I stand up like a champ and I'm in trouble and at this point in time I'm getting in trouble in other places as well so my parents start to kind of realize that I've got an issue right and all my all my bull crap and me telling them that I'm just really unlucky and I'm just doing what everybody else is doing I'm just the only one that's getting caught um, it's starting to run out it runs thin at this point in time it isn't too much longer that they send me to an inpatient rehab as a 17 year old and I, I get I get taken out of school for about three months and and all this happens and I come back and I'm gonna to try to fast forward here real quick. I get my license back senior year finally while my younger sister who's in 10th grade now starts driving me to high school. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, thanks. So anyway, I've, I've gone through treatment. I'm kind of getting my crap together. I'm working really hard. I'm losing some weight. I'm working, you know, I'm, I'm getting my stuff together. I'm making a real effort here. And I get my, my license back in, in high school and I kind of keep it, you know, I'm not ditch to ditch anymore. I'm in my lane and I'm doing okay. It's good, right? So I go for a while and I don't make any drunk driving mistakes. I, I was honestly say I'm, I'm not drunk driving, right? Um, I deploy, I go to the military, I deploy some, um, and obviously I've got a vehicle in Italy. We've told a story about that. I did a little drunk driving there and didn't get caught, but mostly I didn't want to drive because I didn't know where I was going. I wanted somebody else to drive us, right? Um, so I didn't do a lot of driving on my own. Um, I, so I come home from the military and from the second DWI, I was 17, maybe 17, just barely. And then at this point in time, I come back from the military and I'm, oh gosh, how old am I? I'm 22. So some time has passed, right? So I remember I've got my ex-girlfriend, she's in the car with me and a couple of her friends and we're out in, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, old Vietnam. Um, and I've got a, a big, you know, GMC Z71 pickup I've, I've got with me that I've bought with all my military money. I'm very proud of it. I'm working, you know, for myself, the trucking company, my stepdad that kind of got helped me get into that. And, you know, we're out having a good time. And I decide to make the decision that I'm the old guy with the cool truck, with his girlfriend, his younger friends, like we can definitely pull this off. Right. So she's got a little bit of a, a little bit of weed in her car, you know, that she's got in a little one hitter that's pink. Um, so they're smoking and I take a couple hits and I've got to get us back out of out of Fayetteville and back to home, right? Well, I'm driving the trucks a little long. It's got some wide tires I go to make a turn and I bump the curb a little bit Boo! Lights come on I'm Thinking okay, so I pull into a parking lot and I'm not wrecked, but I'm I'm I know I'm I've had too many, right? So I go to pull in and the cop slides in behind me and I know I'm a little bit angled so I try to back up and get my truck right, you know, in the spot. And this does not go over well with the cop that's behind me. I guess it's a bad sign for him. So he gets up to the window and immediately is like, what do you think you're doing? How much have you had to drink? You almost backed into my car. And I'm like, uh, I think that's a stretch. Of course, it smells like somebody's been smoking the marijuana. In, in the South. Yeah, in the South, in Arkansas at the time, which this is still early 2000s, you know, 2005, 2006, and uh, it's... They wouldn't like it. Yeah, though. yeah. Whoa. They probably called the DEA and the helicopter was circling because they could smell the marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so they pull me out, and of course I'm not doing well on the test, and I get hooked up, right? The chain, the cuffs come out, and I was, I'm still a bigger guy now, and I was even then, and I was always, I could always tell when they were radio under their backup, we're going to need another set of cuffs, because I can't... Can't get them all the way. Two cuffs is a little bit easier for me to, to navigate, right? One is pretty tight on me. Can you just do it? I just want to see. Stand up and show them. Wait, how? That's the best you can do. Yeah. Kinda, but it's, really, yeah. If I get two, it's a lot easier. Right. So. Two cuffer, anyway. I'm a two cuffer, <laughs> gotta radio it up. 
and my girlfriend starts crying at the time and I'm sure her friends in the back seat are like we just wanted to get home this sucks <laughs> so you know and I I know I'm in trouble but it's been a minute so I think I'm okay they find the one hitter in the weed and of course she's crying and she's from a family that expect her to be a good girl and nobody's owning up to it and they come up to the window roll it down the back seat and they're like hey uh, you're gonna cough to this to this weed that we found in the car and I was like yeah well I mean I'm not really gonna like I'm not gonna tell you it's not mine but I'm not gonna tell him he goes look man the thing's pink I think it's probably somebody else's and I just said look I'm I got nothing to say to you so I end up they they hit her with the with the one hitter. It's in the glove. She threw it in the glove compartment when they got pulled over, and they knew she's in the passenger seat. It's pink. It's probably hers. You know what I mean? Anyway, her parents for I think for a year or two thought that I I threw that on her. I think she went home and to save face. I think if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that's how it went down because I know we discussed this. She said I I blamed that weed on her and it was mine, but anyway, it wasn't. I did, however, help buy it for her and the one hitter. So, um, anyway, so I, I get hauled off, and now here's where it takes a bend. Because so much time has happened or lapsed from my second DWI when I was 17 to now, I'm, I've kicked the timeline back over. All right? So, I'm technically back on DWI one. All right? Mm -hmm. So, it's my third instance, third. Got a hold of three fingers here. Have you been drinking today? <laughs> <laughs> nothing in this cup, I swear, officer. Um, anyway, so it's I'm back on one. So I'm thinking this this is a good deal, right? Thank you know. Thank man. God. Yeah. So not hey, I made a bad decision. I shouldn't be doing any of this. It's irresponsible and dangerous, and I could hurt myself or somebody else. I just thought, lucky me, right? So now they've got. Um, the blowers, the, what do they call those? The breathalyzer. The breathalyzer. They call it the, they hook it into your car. It's a breathalyzer, yeah. but it's a, they, they got a formal name for it and you got to pay for it. And why well, just opt not to do that because I'm not spending that money and I don't want anybody in my crap because if I want to have a few drinks and drive, I'm responsible enough to make that decision. And right? This is the logic of an alcoholic and an addict. Yeah. Like I, it's fine. I'm okay. Yeah. I know what I'm doing yeah. when you're really out of control. Yeah. So. I don't put it in, and and I got to tell you, I'm driving around like normal on a suspended license. I can't drive anywhere, and I'm and it's you know, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway, right? So for a few months, it goes by, and I get my license back because it's a one. It's you know, three or four months, cool, right? Not a big deal. Um, I get my license back, and I also, at some point in time, after being home for a while. I'm doing well enough for myself. I buy a, a BMW, all right? I get a five series BMW, super nice. I think I'm doing well, I deserve it, right? Deserve it, I've worked for it, I earned it. It's what I wanted, I like the car, so I bought it. It's a nice car, I put the upgrades in it, I get a chip, the governor's lifted, it can top end is 150, 60 miles an hour. You know, it's, it's a nice car. I say this because this is the car I get my last DWI in. <laughs> So some time passes, you know, from number three, which is technically number one on law again, and I'm out with some friends, okay? And we're in, in Arkansas, rather close to where I got the first DWI, is a new bar that we're hanging out in, because it's, time has passed now, you know, it's been almost 10 years since my first one. Northwest Arkansas is allowing some places to serve alcohol and have little clubs and they've got a Buffalo Wild Wings now, which we thought was great when it came to town. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're out having a good time and I make the decision that I'm gonna drive us, right? And I know that like it's, I need to slow down, stop my drinking, I'm drinking only water. Um, you know, I think like, at the time I'm, I'm, I'm still doing other drugs, I'm doing some cocaine, some methamphetamine, some, amphet some uppers. But I stopped drinking for a couple hours, knowing that like that pushing through my, you know, my, my metabolism and my system's going a little quicker because I'm on uppers. I stop drinking, I drink water, and I'm like, hey, I'll drive this, right? So I'm still thinking this is still okay. I'm, this is good decision making, right? So we get in the car and we go to leave. And we're in my, my, my BMW 5 Series. If you've ever driven one or it's like driving a really new vehicle, but it feels like you're driving the Millennium Falcon, <laughs> if you're Star Wars. He's <laughs> such a Star Wars nerd. <laughs> it's, it's Like, it's, I'm sorry to interrupt you. He's so adorable. When I first met him, I thought like, he's gonna wanna talk about protein and working out. He likes Star Wars. Like, 
I know. That's so awesome. Cute. So cute. Anyway, so it's like gliding on air. The vehicles almost drive themselves. They're great cars. So I've slowed down drinking and I, you know, I, I, at this point I'm with all the uppers and stopping and drinking water, I'm pretty clear in my head. I know I am, you know, I, I think like as clear as you can, as be clear as you can be on meth. Correct. <laughs> um, so we leave, right. And I know that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a cop car as I, there's gotta be one that's, that's calling them in because this is like after midnight, Northwest Arkansas. So I hook out and turn a left. I don't go right where I see him at. I go left. Well, there's gotta be a cop that's somehow lapping because the cop that I saw isn't the cop that got behind me. It's different. It's an SUV and a, mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a patrol car gets behind me. Well, he's gotta be circling and the SUV has gotta be calling the cars out when they leave. You know what I mean? So I when make- they, When the cars leave this bar. When they leave the bar. Yeah, so they're, they're basically spotting them, right? Yeah. And I've got, a car, I've got a car full of people. So I'm sure, you know, anyway, I make the left and I think I'm doing okay. I notice pretty quickly, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds after hooking this left, I see a patrol car coming up behind me. I'm thinking, I'm not gonna get this guy. I'm driving in the far right lane. I'm driving a car that doesn't speed. You know what I mean? Like, well, I, I can put the, I can put the, I can put the cruise control and I know the cruise controls sticking, right? And you can almost not touch the steering wheel and it drives itself. So anyway, I get, I play a little game of which lane are we in, right? So I'm in the far right lane and I don't come into his lane and he starts to get behind me. Well, I'm cruise control, I'm coming up where I know I'm in the city of Bentonville. And I know it's a Bentonville cop behind me. I'm really close to the city of Rogers, the old just get across the state line, you know, like I'm in a Western. So this is what I'm thinking. So he gets behind me and I click my, my clicker over, I get, what am I doing here? How do I get in? Actually, actually I'm sorry, let me start the story. He comes up and he gets, up, he gets up close to me and I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna speed. I'm not gonna get behind or in front of you. I am not gonna get far enough ahead of you where you can get behind me. It's not gonna happen, right? So I'm in the far right lane and he's kinda in the left lane. He's kinda, he's toying with it, you know what I mean? I'm like, it's not gonna happen, dude. I'm not doing it, you know what I mean? So he speeds up. So I think here's my moment. I'm coming up on a red light or a stoplight that I know is red that he's gonna have to stop at. It turns green, I think, sweet. He's up in front of me. I clicker behind him, same speed limit. I know he goes through, I give it just a little bit. He goes through the light. I clicker left, get in the turn lane and go to an adjacent road. That I know if I go down quick enough, it's got an overpass on the interstate that drops me right into the city of Rogers. So as soon as he goes through that light, I click, turn lane, I get over. And as soon as I know, and I've got a radar detector in this car that I've spent like $600 on, it's not going off, all right? So I know he's not hitting me. I make this left and I know he goes through this light. At this point in time, I think here's my opportunity. I, I drop the hammer on this car and I explode. I'm doing almost 120 miles an hour on this side road. And one of my buddies goes, he looks like he's making a Yui. <laughs> And I just, I'm flying. Radar detector never goes off. I get to the turn, I make my right hand turn. I slow it down because I know I'm in like 25 mile an hour zone, right? Oh my God. So I, and I drop down because I don't want him to catch up and hit me. My, my radar detector hasn't gone off yet. So I think I've only got a couple miles. There's no way. I make my right hand turn, I'm gonna slow down. As I'm getting close to the overpass where I'm going to hit the, hit, the, hit, the, hit the little bridge that goes over the interstate, I see him behind me coming up. He's already made the turn. That means this cop had to do 100 plus miles an hour just like I did to catch up to me. But my radar detector goes off, so I know he didn't hit me. I just know he had to be soaring through that, that, that pass road like I did to catch me. And I'm thinking, oh God, please. I've got the... I've got the this, the the uh, cruise control on 25. I'm like this damn 25 mile an hour speed limit. So I'm holding my 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 steering wheel, just creeping down this road as I know this cop is coming up behind me, just catching me. And I'm thinking, just please, just hang on. I've got less than half a mile. I'm going to be over the interstate. He can't hit me. I cross over, and before I get to the stop sign, there's a little like a commons or like a little shopping center strip mall place to. Ooh, he hits the lights and I pull in I'm thinking here we go and I know I know I'm still cleaning the head like I talked about 
my radar detector didn't go off. I know he didn't hit me for speeding. I know when he got behind me, I was on my cruise control and that BMW was not swerving. I know for a fact, I did not make a mistake. He just pulled me over because he got radio, car leaving bar, 1.30 in the morning, pull it over, it's probably suspicious, right? So he pulls me over and I said, is there a problem? He goes, well, I need you to step out of the car. I said, no, I didn't do anything. Why'd you pull me over, is there a problem? And he, he couldn't come up, I just need you to step out for a minute. I said, okay. And I tell my friends, I said, hey, somebody come get the car and tell me, tell the bondsman to come get me. So anyway, he says, get out of the car. And I tell my friends, I'm like, hey, just make sure my car gets parked, let me know, and I'll get the bondsman or somebody call him, and I'll come get it tomorrow. I know I'm going to jail, right? So I step out of the car and he's like, I just need you. I said, no, no, because at this point in time, I've had enough DWIs. Under advice of counsel, I know how to handle this situation. And I know Jessica's had some, she's had some friends, her, her boys out in, in California. Pop brothers at the law. The pop brothers at law, shut the f up. So yeah. at this point in time, I've learned not through the advice, well, some advice from counsel, but I just know. Shut well, the f up. Yeah. I said, I didn't do anything. I wasn't speeding, I wasn't swerving. I'm not doing anything. He goes, because he's trying to coax me into doing the, the sobriety field test, right? I said, no, I'm not doing it. He goes, that's how it's going to be. I said, that's how it's going to be. He goes, turn around, you're under arrest for DWI. Turn around, hooks me up, takes me in. And at this point in time, I'm not saying anything, I'm not doing anything. I get to the police station, I'm not giving them a breathalyzer. I'm not even answering. When they're like, hey, we need you to sign for your, sign for your shoes, your stuff, you know. I get to the police station and they're trying to get me to do the breathalyzer, I won't do it. I'm just not responding. I'm just complying with direct orders, but I'm not giving them anything. And they won't even, they, they try to get me to sign for my shoes and my stuff, and I just won't, I'm just sitting there. And they've got, at this point in time, they've got a few people in there, a few, you know, a few shift guys, and then they start dogging them. And they're like, oh, tough guy, this is how it's gonna be, huh? And they're kind of razzing me a little bit, talking you know. So much shit. Talking, you know, yeah, give them some attitude. And finally, I, at this point in time, I'm, you know, I know I'm going to jail, I know all my circumstances, you know, I just said, didn't somebody tell me I had the right to remain silent? I kind of remember that coming out of somebody's mouth. And fucking, that was it. They stopped and I was like, I, I, know the, I know the drill here. Just pack my shit, put me in my place. I'll call my bondsman tomorrow, I'll get out. It's a DWI, right? So anyway, that's the story of one, two, three, four, okay? Now, here's the caveat, here's the turn. I hire a lawyer on this last one. You hire a what? A lawyer. A I lawyer. An attorney. Say oil. Oil. No. <laughs> oil. 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 Say lawyer again. Lawyer. Ah, that's so cute. <laughs> but anyway, I know on this last one, I didn't make a mistake. I know they targeted me. I know that cop had to, he made that turn specifically to chase me. He did 100 plus miles an hour to get behind me. I know I didn't do anything wrong. Why well, I did, but they don't have anything on me. And I'm like, I'm gonna beat this DWI. I am, I've had enough of this crap. I'm not gonna get this guy. So I hired an attorney. And the attorney goes to pull the dash footage and everything else. Well, apparently this guy hasn't been on, on the force very long, which I could tell by his attitude, um, since it was not my first time being arrested. Anyway, we go, to, we go to start the proceedings and the exchange and I go and I plead not guilty and they, they start to do this to discovery and for some reason the dash cam footage isn't working. And the guy can't articulate on paper if he caught me swerving or speeding anywhere because he doesn't have the recorded, uh, recorded radar hit and the dash cam for some reason wasn't on. It was working previously in the night and then later when he stopped somebody else but it just was malfunctioning on mine because he knew he didn't have anything, so he, they got rid of it. That happens all the time. So anyway, and, and because, this is the way my attorney explained it to me, because I got out and I refused the breathalyzer and I refused the field sobriety test, he said, that is where they, they lost ground with you because usually they've got you on camera. And even if you look good doing your, your walking the line, you're doing, the one they'll get you on is to follow the light and all that, you can't see that on camera. That dash cam is not close enough. And right. all that cop has to say is he saw enough to make him, give him suspicion to, to arrest you, all right? And then once you refuse the, the test at the, at the station, which is the real test, they'll get you for a refusal and it's an automatic by law DWI. Because if you refuse, they can give you a DWI. So the best thing that you can do is not drive drunk, call an Uber. Yeah. 
Beyond that, step one. <laughs> if you have made that mistake, and please, for all that is holy, don't. Yeah. If you are pulled over for that, and you know you've been drinking, do not do the field sobriety test. Don't do the eye test. Refuse everything. You will go to jail, you're but going you can to. fight that charge because there's no evidence on you. Correct. What you're doing when you agree to these things, you're agreeing to give them the evidence they need to convict you. You're being complicit. You're so, giving. You're, you're giving consent. Mm -hmm. yep. That's, we follow the Pot Brothers at Lost Script. Why did you pull me over? I'm not discussing my day when I ask you questions, and I invoke my Fifth Amendment right, and then you shut up, you know, and you get a lawyer. And I say that to everyone. I know I get a lot of hate for telling people their rights, but it's your right to shut the hell up. Don't be rude about it. Don't be mean. Don't be disrespectful to officers. Yeah. These are your constitutional rights. Everybody so. has been given these rights. Just like you have the right to make your own mistakes, you also have the right not to further incriminate yourself because we're gonna go ahead and call a spade a spade. We know for a fact, humans are humans, they make mistakes, and there are corrupt people, there are bad cops, there are people that embellish, don't, don't open the door to that. You've already made yes. enough mistakes. Making more by opening your mouth is a bad idea. Yes, and a lot of people think I can just reason with them, I can talk myself out of this. No, you can't. It's it's like my, like my scenario that I'm working through in this last one. I got pulled over, I knew I was going to jail. It did not matter if I gave them that, that test, I consented. They were gonna hook me up. Just like me, he's like, is that how it's gonna be? Yeah, that's how it's gonna be. Turn around, you're under arrest. Now my attorney. I like how you say lawyer. My lawyer. <laughs> that's so um, When I, we started to get the discovery, like I said, and the camera didn't work, and he couldn't articulate what exactly I did wrong. They didn't have the hit on the radar detector gun where he'd actually paused and hit it. None of the timelines matched. My attorney, or lawyer, <laughs> said, look, this would be DWI number two for you because notice I got one, two, timeline, back to one, this would be number two. He goes, because there is nothing to actually suggest or prove that you were actually were driving drunk and there's enough holes in this story, I can get it reduced back to a DWI from two, a one charge. I said, well, wait a minute. You just told me they didn't have crap on me. Yeah. I said, why can't we just get it wiped all together? He goes, look, man, don't push it. He goes, <laughs> you're a guy that's got three DWIs on his record already. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm gonna have a hard time convincing this judge that you were leaving that bar at 1.30 in the morning and you weren't probably drinking at this time too. I said, okay, good point. I will take your counsel. So they got it reduced from a two back to a one. So technically on paper, on paper, I have three DWI ones and a DWI two, but I've been pulled over for drinking and driving and arrested four times. But like I said, that last one is the take it home point. The real point is don't drink and drive. Yes. I mean, ultimately, you know, one is too many. You know what I mean? If, use good judgment. Get, get an Uber, get somebody. Whatever you got to do, there's always a better, a better case scenario than you getting in the car and driving and something, anything. It's not you, even if something random was gonna happen and it happened anyway and you were drunk, it makes it worse, you know what I mean? So just don't, don't do it. Don't I can't it. tell you the amount of people I have met in prison or talked to that have been to prison on vehicular manslaughter charges or reckless driving, accident, and getting in a car accident involving an injury. If you are drunk, you're going to prison on yeah. that and someone is severely hurt. So I can't even stress enough how important it is, you, not for just your safety, but the safety of others yeah. to not drink. I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, let's assume you're drinking and you're driving and somebody else swerves and bumps you and then there's a big accident, they're gonna get everybody's gonna blood and it's gonna be your fault or even worse, play this out. You're drinking and you make a mistake and a little kid or something dies. You make a small mistake and you're not paying attention. You're looking at your phone, you've got the music, even basic stuff and something really bad happens all because you just couldn't stay put or make a better decision, like you would really be sorry with yourself. So, I mean, there's always that to remember. But in the, if you find yourself in the situation where you have driven drunk and you've gotten pulled over, don't give them anything. Don't say anything, just take your hit, get cuffed up, go to jail, it ain't that bad, you're gonna be out in less than 24 hours and deal with it after that, so. All right, good times, great. <laughs> I, I, I was definitely a proponent. I was always, you know, I tell this story, and like I said, I was always trying to tell my parents, like, oh, I'm not doing anything that anybody else isn't doing. You know, I'm just, I'm getting caught, I'm unlucky. It's crap, man, I was making, it's amazing I, it's amazing I got caught the, the times that I did. I should have been caught a hundred other times. We were literally at 16, and I had that cool car, and I had some friends, 
If we didn't have anything to do, we would get some beer and put a cooler in the back seat and we just drive around for hours while I'm driving, just drinking beer, cracking them, throwing them out, give me another one. And we're just all driving around like it's cool. That's what we would do sometimes. And I'm like trying to pass it off like, I'm just unlucky. Everybody else does it every now and then. And I, it, I was just a habitual line crosser. And it's amazing that I, A, made it out alive and B, did get in a lot more trouble than I did, so. Okay, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will link Reese's entire playlist in the description box down below. Go check out his stories. He's been curb stomped, set himself on fire. He's had all kinds Meth of- Meth in a hotel casino. Yeah, there's tons of stories. Um, if you've made a bad decision, you probably made it with me one time. <laughs> There are plenty of videos for you guys to watch on Reese. Yeah. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery. Don't drink and drive. And, I'll, and if you do, shut the up. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. That's my seat, Bowie. You're in my seat. <laughs>